everybody, welcome back to this week's show. I will tell you what, like I do each and every week, we have got a lot going on. And I'll tell you with our good friend, Tommy Hicks. Tommy, beyond the catch. You, wow, what do we have going on here? Two brand new sherps out here. That is styling big time. Let's kind of tell everybody really why you decided to go this way and go into this type of vehicle for yeah. your kind of guiding that you do. Well, there's multiple reasons. We all know the climate's changed a little bit. Winters are getting a little extreme either one way or the other. They change in the middle of the season. Uh, a lot of really wicked winds, you know. This year has been today. crazy. Every yep. year now. Um, a big thing is the safety. You know, we're going out in the Apostle Islands. I ran sleds for years. We're going out 30 miles someday and people that maybe don't drive them as much and over the years I just got more of a bad gut feeling. This is super comfortable, all our gears inside. We're I safe. can't believe all the gear you got in there. All heated, yep, you know, all heated. It's very impressive. They're amphibious, so if we happen to go through the ice, we can we've water tested them, we can climb back out and we'll show you some of that footage. Yeah, it's a great footage. Super impressive. I mean you want to talk about a wild ride, getting that thing when you're trying to climb back up. We're up here today and basically, you know, we've got a really good group of guys here. We've got uh, Rick and Terry from the Bite Me Box and these guys have never fished up here with their we tip ups. Fished them. We have we done very well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. these guys were excited yeah. about coming up here and fishing up here and we also have Ben and Tony from Eskimo and Ion here, yep. and I'll tell you, these guys love this type of fishing here, so I'm excited about that. that. 10 inch, man. Oh, that's a nice auger, isn't I got it? A, not the best neck, and I will be uh, probably lightening up my auger system <laughs> after today. That's hey, sure. let's tell everybody who else we have out here. We got Colton. Colton. My dad, of course, yep. senior. Oh, senior. And we got Box, the Josh Box. Box. Box? Box. Box. Box, like box. Box, like box. So box. Like boxy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep, so we're anywhere from, say, 27 feet. We got another tent in 22. We got bite me boxes going in real shallow. We're going to be For catching browns? splake, browns. Okay. There'll be maybe some whitefish and lakers, maybe some cohos up here. If this bite slows down with the high pressure we got, we're going to slide down the ledge. There's a big break on a lot of these islands, and we're going to go on that steep bank where these whitefish are feeding on the hill, and we're going to rip probably blade baits, uh, wraps. Shiver, shiver minnows, baby, minnows. right there. Yep. yep. And we're going to make them chase up and crack them. They're super aggressive. Yeah. Very lucky, too, this year we partnered with Legendary Waters Resort and Casino in Redcliffe. That's get where to we stayed last unit. night. Yeah, we stayed yep. there last night. We get to keep our units up there. A lot of clients are staying there. You wake up Makes in the morning. Makes it convenient. We pick you up at the front door in a shirt and we go out in the islands and you're warm the entire time. Woo, doesn't get any better. Hey, you guys, we are going to have an exciting day, so I will guarantee you that. So hang on to your hindies. Flag here. It's brutal out here this morning. Just got those coals lit. They haven't chance to warm up real good yet. But first, I wonder if he's what wound up. Oh, there, nice he fish. there he is. There he is. Nice fish. Right. He'll pop right out. And they good are cool. slippery. Slippery. Boy. Yeah, that is the problem we had that other one. They're so slippery. You know, to get a hold of those things is tough. But pretty nice fish, fish, man. So that's a cross between a brook trout and a lake trout. The meat on them is absolutely phenomenal. That just looks good eating. Oh. <laughs> Just a reddish orange meat. Yep. Love Super it. Super delicious. Love it. We're definitely, right. so these fish don't reproduce. They're meant just for the sport fishermen. Okay. So we definitely keep these oh, Mostly up. planted, yeah. Yeah, they're all planted. <laughs> yep, yep. No reproducing on the splakes. Oh, sure. There's a little weight here, boys. Uh -huh. Hey Tommy, what a way to scout too! Yeah, we this just kind of nice. I'm just sitting in the back here chit chatting with you. Yeah. yeah, and you're jigging right out the front. Came out to the deep window. ledge here. What do you got going there? I'm guessing a white fish. We're a little bit deeper here too, yep. right? Yeah, I'm down at 55. Now. Okay. And basically, are you just working that bottom water column? Yeah. Well, I'm really, I'm using this vibrato. I'm setting it on the bank. There. What do you got? White fish. There's a white fish. Super good table fare right there. Decent size too. That is a good one. Yep. I like that. Right now I'm using a blade bait. I'm kind of setting it in the bottom and they're going along this bank and they're feeding and they'll pin that bait on the bottom. Okay. When they start chasing, then we're going to swim baits and we make them chase up 30 feet and they'll come, you give them that, that pause awesome and they'll bite. crack it. Yep. So you're really expecting this bite to kind of pick up here around 10 o'clock. I do. I didn't get even here yesterday. We started down the island. I got here at 11 and we did very well yesterday. Hey, it's um, interesting, Thomas came over here to film this fish. He's just uh, over by the guys about 40 yards there. And I uh, was saying it's so cold out, the second that he goes inside one of them Eskimo hubs it, with the heat in there, that camera freezes up instantly. So unfortunately, we had to tell him you're going to sit outside all day. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's uh, not, hey, he's, he's not, there's he's no not, smile. He's not laughing. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, Thomas. <laughs> oh, close plate. They are slippery. You let this one go, right? Yeah, yeah you got to look. Settle down. You came up backwards. Calm down, buddy. Calm down. These are the most slippery fish ever. <laughs> now they got to be, what, 15? So... All right, Rick, I'm going to need a hand with this. Yeah, a wet hand. <laughs> that little pause you think you do there's it? a Come lot to that pause but not pausing it too long no either. so you only get a little bit so I jig oh, it this fish comes. is coming up to me here coming up to me right now I pause it and I'm waiting for that I oh, need he, he bumped it I don't okay. know if you saw that on the camera he's coming up and once you get him to get to the top of that 12 foot zoom it seems like if I can get him out of it they'll really start chasing hard nope. that's what's exciting about using the Vexlar too you can really read these fish and how they're reacting and and the different cadences that you need to get these fish to, to trigger. And some of them you really got to work a lot harder oh, than he's others. Just this one's really, yeah, he, he's going to get bumped. Yeah, I'll get him. Stay on him, Thomas. Don't let that camera yeah. freeze up. Here. So you can see on the screen here, we got the 12 foot zoom on the left, whole water column on the right. And I'm fishing right in the bottom here in 55 feet. But you just kind of see my bait coming through that blind area. Now here's my lure. So I'm not seeing the bottom, say, three and a half feet. But a lot of what I'm doing is pausing on that bottom and just a, with a blade bait, just giving it a sh the shortest, quick jig you can do where you feel vibrating the rod. And the mag's rod is beautiful for being able to tell when that bait's working correctly. I mean, you're totally not going by look at all on this bite. I am feeling everything with my thumb and my index finger. And the second I feel any resistance almost on your jig, you're setting the hook. Yeah. Delicious Lake Superior Whitefish. Hooked up. Hooked up. Understandable though, it's brutal conditions today. Little guy. It's alright, they're all fun. Oh yeah, that's a good sign. The reel's turning. Charcoal going, it's nice and warm. Nice. Oh, nice fish. Nice. That looks like that one's gonna go back, so let's try to get him off and back in there. A shiver minnow. Yep. Just put it on. They're starting to chase a little more. So we got out of the uh, blade bait, because if they'll chase, we like them swim baits. So we put the black and gold. I love the fall on. ratio of that shiver minnow. And what'd you get? Like always, they grab that minnow head on that bottom treble hook. Let's show everybody exactly how you put that yeah. in there. So I hold that shiver minnow so that the hook that's sticking down, or sticking out, I would say. And I, here's the shiner head, and I'm going just, oh, my line got twisted up. I'm going just under the jaw and out the head of that shiver minnow. So it lays right against that body and it lets that bait swim as much as it can. Looks a lot more natural. Yep, yep, and they'll come and that's the, the one thing they grab. And the other little trick, this is a top secret, but I'll pinch that and them two little fins hanging down. A lot of times whitefish don't like that, the pectoral fins. And I'll pull them off so you got nothing extra hanging. That's a great tip. The key is to try to get this fish to chase. So I'm pumping this bait, pumping this bait till that red mark's just about meeting my mark, and then I'll stop. And then if you can think in your mind of that bait gliding, Right when that bait stops is when they're going to grab it. If they don't grab it within a second of it stopping, you have to get it swimming again and make them chase again, or you'll see that fish become uncommitted and they'll go back to the bottom. Yep, so I'm using just 15-pound braid. It's a Nanofill with an 8-pound leader. 
How long How long a liter do you typically like? Because this water is super clean. Yeah, I'm doing a barrel swivel up like three feet and then another two, three feet of mono. Okay. Or the, yeah, the mono. We use a lot of mags mediums. I'm actually with a medium heavy because mainly I'm fishing blind and I want to feel it all in my hand. Okay. This is a little heavier bait too, the shiver metal. And do you feel with that, the medium heavy, you can get a little bit different cadence out of it? A little yeah, bit different a little flip. quicker pop. Okay. You know, and some days that's bad. Some days that's good. Right. Today it's working. We're in that 60 foot range. It's kind of the in-between, you know. Okay. When we're up on them flats in the 30, I love that mags medium. But now we're getting to that depth, especially you get down to that 70, 80, 90 on the so bottom of the this ledge. Heavy. Yeah, the medium right. heavy, yeah. Look at that, pulling a little drag. So this is a lake trout, I would about, a lake trout or a brown, but I'm guessing a lake trout. It's interesting, you can tell the difference just by the fight. Yeah, big time. Well, that one just stopped me, pulled a little drag. Okay. Definitely some major head shakes. And there is a nice lake trout on the shiver minnow. On the shiver yeah. metal. Yep. And again, is it hooked right? Yep. Right same on that thing. treble. You know, same thing. Tommy says gold shiver minnow is the ticket. Catch and release. Yep. Not practicing catch and into the grease. Sportsman. <laughs> sportsman. Is it a lady? Shotgun in the kitchen here with Executive Chef Jan. What wow. we got going on today, woman? It looks like we got walleye in here and it's still frozen. Exactly, Steve. We have a great product here. So many of us can't use what we catch right away, so it goes right into the freezer. This is a great use for that frozen fish. We take our walleye chunks that we made into bite-sized pieces, toss them in a pan. You want me to cut her up in like one inch sections, you said? Right about one inch. All right. Toss a little butter in the pan. <laughs> Quite a bit of butter, because you'll notice the sauce for this is butter. And more butter. There we go, skin's still on, people see that? Yep, skin's still on. A good chunk of garlic, minced, and we're roaring a lot. Yep. We're gonna go in with a little uh, white wine of your choice and a little very dry white. It's gonna saute for a couple minutes. We're gonna add these cracker crumbs. Huh. Okay. Gotcha. So, go on in with those. You half sure? of them. Oh, you're lucky you said save, I was gonna. <laughs> I'm sorry, save half for the topping. All comes together very fast. You see oh. that? Mm -hmm. Fish is almost halfway cooked already. It really is. Oh. What are you smelling right now? A little bit of garlic. <laughs> and the vermouth too, big time. And the vermouth, yeah. It doesn't even taste like fish with the vermouth and everything in there. <laughs> Seriously, it does not taste like fish. It tastes to, like... To look at it, it could look like chicken. Really, it does, but that, it's, it's a, that white It's like a steak. You make it like this, it's like a steak. Mm -hmm. It's fish steak. There you go. Fresh from the freezer onto the plate. That's very in good. In five minutes. Well, in the kitchen with Jan, got garlic, walleye with breadcrumbs, what was this? Irish butter? Irish butter. And wine and sweet vermouth from Leroy's Kitchen. This is a good deal here. Guys, what were we, five minutes maybe at the most? Five minutes at most. Built for fishermen, built by fishermen. Um, really, that says it all. It's the family here. It's, it's not a big, big conglomerate. It's a family. They treat you, you feel like you're in a family, you know. 
when you put those two together, an amazing product and amazing people, it's just the type of company you want to be involved with. Not only because of just the great boats, but because of the camaraderie that the Warrior family has. The customer service is amazing. Uh, they never leave you hanging. So come join the Warrior family. On another one, I can't even leave. I like it. I'm glad you're here, sir. <laughs> Guys, we're having so much fun out here today. It's pretty cool fishing with Tommy and the gang. We uh, we loaded up the shacks. We're fishing an Outbreak 450s. We've got a couple of them around here. And we've just spread out and covering some different water. And uh, it's it's well below zero, and we are nice and toasty in here. And we'll give Ben a little slack. Oh, we got another one. Got Dad's another hooked one. up. And he switched holes over there. So Tony, <laughs> let's talk about that 10 inch ion. What'd you think? Tommy, it's it I'm makes impressed. It, it, it's light. It's very light. It's feather light for a 10 inch. I love the fact that I don't like dragging ice in these sherps yeah. or in any one of your sleds. Yep. And you can just bend them blades a little bit and get all that ice off of there. Yeah, you're using that G2 with that poly flight, that polymer flight. Yeah. It's, it's so nice for getting ice up. And 18 pounds for a 10 inch auger, that's unheard of. Unheard of. Fish. Okay. Oh, there you go. well, let's, let's get, yeah. This one's a, this one's shaking his head a little bit. Okay, well that could be a trout varietal. All right, buddy. Yeah. Look at this. That's where this 10 inch hole is nice, huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, today we uh, brought those 10 inch G2s out, those ions, and it's so nice. They only weigh 18 pounds, but it's a big difference when you're fighting these fish in a 10 inch hole versus an 8 inch hole. What do you got on the other end of that line there, bud? Show yourself. Leader up. Oh, oh, it's a nice brown. It is a beautiful brown. Oh, you just saw it. <laughs> oh boy, you just realized, uh, you just realized what was happening here. So Benny, what do you think? Is this a little uh, extra pressure doing it with is, the camera? This is pretty exciting right now. It's a nice brown, eh? Yes. <laughs> wow. That is a dandy. Beautiful job yes. fighting that fish. Nice job, Ben. Nice you. job, Ben. Man, man, buddy. Man. Excellent, excellent Beautiful. job. You bring a guy up a good auger, hey? All of a sudden, we'll get you on a nice brown. <laughs> what a dandy, hey? Absolutely amazing How long do you think experience. that was, what, an eight, ten minute fight probably? I had to be coming up on ten minutes there. That was exciting. That's a good, I don't know, seven, eight pounder. What a beauty. Beautiful amazing. fish. Pretty. Get a couple of quick stills, and we're going to let this one go. These are definitely the fish that we uh, we promote releasing on. For, Absolutely. For sure. Well, Tommy, that was quite the experience. I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, for some of us. Yeah, for some. <laughs> <laughs> right. But hey, everybody did a great job. You want to? I definitely want to thank you know Rick and Terry from the Bite Me Box. Yep, awesome yep, job yep. that they did. And of course, Tony and Ben from. Congrats, Ben, on your biggest brown. Oh, event. yeah, from our Sam and, yeah. and Ion, cool. just great job them guys did. Hey, and I'll tell you what, I want to thank uh, your dad, Senior, and the rest of the guys that came out and helped yeah, us. Yeah, for sure. Great guys. You know, the fishing was really good. Hey, so you got a lot of things going on. It's yeah. not just fishing. Yeah, we're Let's also doing about... tours. I mean, this year we booked so full right away. You do still have a couple spots with like two person seats this year, but all the days have people in them. But we are doing tours after fishing as well. So we'll go out into the islands, we can walk towards the caves, check them out. Um, 
That'll be more like the three till the sunset tour. Okay. You know? And next year we'll kind of see how that takes off and we might adjust a couple days just for tours and then days just for fishing. Boy, absolutely perfect. I mean, riding inside one of these yeah. is nice and warm, yeah. comfortable. Major game. And the things that you can see. Hey, Tommy, let's tell everybody if they want to get a hold of you and yep. they're certainly good. You can see right up there, there's our email. And 715-292-4342. And of course, hit us up on Facebook. Awesome. Yep, yeah, hey, okay. if you guys are looking for a great auger, make sure you check out uh, check out the Ion. Or if you're looking for a great shelter, check out Eskimo. And no doubt, if you're looking for an awesome tip-up, the only tip-up I think in a conditions like today that's Ooh. the hold-in freeze-up, make sure you check out Bite Me Box. Yeah, hey, thanks for like up. we thanks do for every sure. week, we want to thank all of our military men and women for the great service that they give this country and all of our law, law enforcement agents and firefighters and paramedics. And remember, we are still living in the greatest country in the world, and no doubt it is a great day to be alive. And we'll see you guys again next week. This is another great use for the tubble towels. And it makes a huge difference getting all that salt off your lens covers here for your headlights as far as being able to see so much better. You gotta go oh, right to the Ion 10 inch. The Ion 10 inch is a superior ice auger. Ten, ten times the speed. Uh, it's unreal. Absolutely. It drove through the ice like crazy. It looked like <laughs> Granny's knife through the butter dish. Just let her eat. I'll just give a full disclaimer, I am not an ice fisherman, I just play one on TV. <laughs>